What's up everybody, it's Park with BI Elite. This video is for my statistics and data science nerds out there. In this video, we're gonna learn how to create a correlation matrix within Power BI. A correlation matrix or correlation plot is really helpful because it allows you to see the correlation between two different variables in your data set. For example, we are looking at the famous MT cars data set, which gives you information on different cars. For example, it gives you the miles per gallon, for a specific car, it gives you the horsepower for a specific car. And pitting those two against each other, we can see how correlated those two variables are. For example, if I wanna look at my horsepower column, I can see that it is positively correlated with the number of carburetors in the car. It is positively correlated with the number of cylinders in the car, but horsepower is negatively correlated with miles per gallon. That makes sense because the higher the horsepower you have, the lower your miles per gallon in your car is. So I should back up for just one second. If it is red, it means there is a negative correlation between those variables. If it is blue, it means there is a positive correlation between those variables. And to fully understand what this is showing us, I wanna go ahead and plot uh, this real quick. So let's create a quick scatter plot. And if I go to my cars data set, and in our recent example, we we're doing horsepower versus miles per gallon. So I'm gonna take horsepower on the X miles per gallon on the Y, and I can just simply add a trend line. We see that it trends downwards, meaning it should be red here, showing a negative correlation. Uh, in the previous example as well, we did horsepower versus number of cylinders. So let me change miles per gallon to number of cylinders, and we see, oh, sorry, horsepower on the X, cylinders on the Y and we see a positive correlation. That's why it is colored blue. It's nice to see this in matrix format because it's going to boil it down to a single number. It doesn't make us have to interpret the slope of the line or the distribution of the points. It's just going to easily tell us, are these two variables correlated, yes or no. There is a custom visual available on AppSource that lets you create a correlation plot nice and easy, but it does require that you download and install R. And I know a lot of people don't want to have to download and install R and enable script visuals. So that's why I'm making this video so we can create this visual natively within Power BI. There's a lot of power in creating visuals natively within Power BI because it allows us to customize however we want to. So with that, let's go ahead and dive in. I'm gonna to try to keep this a little bit briefer than usual because there are a good number of calculations that we have to create. So let's get to it. Firstly, let's take a quick look at our raw data set. If you do want access to this data set, you can just download this Power BI file uh, by going to the blog post link down in the description. It's gonna have all of these different tables here, but right now I'm gonna show you our main data table. It's called cars. Uh, we see we have an index column that's just gonna tell us which number of car we're looking at. We see that we have data for 32 different cars. So for car number one, it has a value of 21 miles per gallon. It has six cylinders in the engine, a displacement value of 160, horsepower of 110, for example. I don't necessarily know what all of these columns mean. If you wanna learn, uh, I'll link this uh, link down in the description as well. It just has a nice description of all of these variables. I'm not incredibly knowledgeable about cars, so I'll stick to what I do know. So as you might expect, if you have some knowledge of cars, uh, you can expect that as the horsepower goes up, the miles per gallon is gonna go down. As the weight goes up, the miles per gallon is gonna go down. It just kind of makes sense with how cars are built. And that's exactly what we're gonna see in that correlation plot. So the next step after you load in the data, I'm gonna go to Power Query here. So the next step after you load in the data, I've just added an index column, which is actually pretty important. So I added an index column starting from one and I reordered it to put the index in the very beginning. So that's all I have for my raw data table. And then I'm gonna create a cars pivot table, which is just referencing my cars table. And I'm going to unpivot all columns other than my index column. Let me just replicate what I've done there. So starting with my cars table, I have my index column uh, highlighted here, right click, unpivot other columns. That's going to put it in a nice vertical format where I have my index. So all of these values of one was my first row of data that we just looked at. I have my attribute and I have my value. So we need it in this format in order to do our calculations properly. And then finally, I have two tables that are identical here, attributes one. This is basically just getting a distinct list of our attributes. And in order to do that, I just reference my cars pivot table 
I removed all columns other than the attribute and we see that it just replicates over and over and over. So I just removed the duplicates in that column. That gives us all of our individual variables that we want to analyze. And then attributes too is the exact same thing. I just duplicated, but I could have referenced as well. But here we are with just two tables that give us all of our attributes. So we have those four tables, only the last three are really necessary. Uh, you can disable the load of the raw data table if you want to, but I just kept it in so I could show you the scatter plots. So with that, that's all of the data that we need in the proper format. So I'm gonna go ahead and close and apply. And quickly in the modeling view, we see that there is no relationship between attributes one and attributes two. So in our uh, visualization view, uh, I'm gonna create a new tab and we can build this from scratch. So let's create a matrix visual. Let's bring this to the middle. So in attributes one, I'm gonna take my attribute column and throw it in the rows. In attributes two, I'm gonna take my attribute column and throw it in the columns. So that doesn't work until we throw in a measure. I have a measure called one, which is literally just equal to the value of one. I'm gonna throw that in the values here. So we can see there's just the value of one for every different combination of our rows and columns. So that's working just fine for now. And now we get into the actual calculation of the correlation coefficient, which is just going to give us the representation of the red or blue color. So in order to actually calculate this, I'm gonna show you uh, the specific calculation. It looks like this. So this R is the correlation coefficient. Um, and we have just uh, different variables that we need to calculate in order to arrive at the final single number. To break it down quickly, n is the total number of samples, so the total number of cars in our data set. x is uh, basically our value along the x. y is our value along the y. So this one specifically right here is the sum of x times y. We then want to subtract the sum of the x multiplied by the sum of the y. So you can see this is very specific, kind of looks like a statistics calculation, a very specific one. Um, so if we just follow this to a T, we arrive at this correlation coefficient. I'm gonna go ahead and skip the bottom here because we're actually gonna put that into action in our final measure calculation. Um, but basically you can kind of get your head wrapped around how we need to calculate all these different variables. Sum of X times Y, sum of X, sum of Y. I see sum of X squared. I see sum of Y squared. So those are the five or six calculations that we need to replicate. They're all gonna be extremely similar though. So we just need to wrap our heads around one of those calculations. All right, so in my cars pivot table, I've already created these calculations and we can start to throw this in just maybe a table just to understand how these calculations are, are working here. So in, if you recall from our page here, in is the total number of samples, total number of cars, so that's easy just distinct count of my cars pivot index. So if we throw this in, we see we have 32 cars. That's perfect. Nextly, we need to understand the sum of x, y. So sum of x times y. So basically that is going to look at our data set. Let me look at our cars view. Actually, let's um, pick an example here. So let's say we wanna figure out the correlation between horsepower on the x and miles per gallon on the y. So what we need to do is we need to sum x times y so that is miles per gallon times horsepower and we're summing that all the way down so if we want to understand this imagine a calculate column that's the horsepower times miles per gallon in this example it'll be somewhere times uh, somewhere around 2000 so calculate the uh, product of the two and then sum them all that's how we're basically doing that so in order to put that into code let's take a look at our x y so it's a fairly easy pattern once you understand it. So current X is selected value of my attributes two. Remember my attributes two is along my X, my columns. Current Y is my attributes one attribute, which is going down my Y or my rows. And then we need to create a virtual table. I'm just gonna call it var virtual and set it equal to the summarize column. So we're summarizing our pivot table, our cars pivot table. We are going to group based on the index and then I just want to grab the value for my current X. So it's basically looking just like my cars table. For index one, give me the horsepower value along my X. Give me the miles per gallon value along my Y. So basically it's just getting the max value where my attribute 
is my x, which in this case, we're talking about miles per gallon. Similarly, doing it for the y, grabbing that value where my uh, current y is horsepower. And then finally, we just return the sum x of my virtual table x times y. So as you can see, we're creating this virtual table. So it's going to go from one to 32, all of my index values, and it's grabbing the x and the y value. And then finally, we're iterating through that table, multiplying x times y. So pretty easy to do. We're gonna replicate this pattern for all of our calculations. For example, x, it is the exact same pattern, but we're basically just summing x. For y, we are just summing y. For x squared, we're summing x times x. For y squared, we're summing y times y. And I think that is all of our calculations. So that, that's pretty much it. Um, if you need a second to wrap your head around that one, maybe plot that one out, let that soak in. Uh, and then our final measure is just this correlation coefficient. And what this is, is it is this exactly. So we have our n times xy minus x times y divided by square root of n times x squared minus x squared times n times y squared minus y squared. That is exactly what it's doing here. Not too much to talk about there. But once we have it done like that, we can remove, well actually, let me go ahead and get rid of my table. We can remove the ones from here. I'm gonna throw in my correlation coefficient. And my correlation coefficient right now is rounded to zero decimal places. But if I, let's add a couple decimal places, we see the actual correlation coefficients uh, for these different uh, combinations of variables. So now if I want to create some coloring, I go to my correlation coefficient in the values, conditional formatting, and add a background color. So I'm going to build this conditional formatting based on color scale, based on correlation coefficient calculation. So my lowest value, I'm actually going to create custom from negative one. It's going to be a red color to a value of one, which is blue. So negative one is red, positive one is blue. Anywhere in between will be kind of a purple color. Let's go ahead and click OK. And there is our correlation matrix. So in order to just format this properly, we can get rid of our uh, subtotals. So I can get rid of my row subtotals, my column subtotals. I don't need that anymore. Um, I can also uh, change my correlation coefficient conditional formatting font color to be the exact same thing so I want my font color to match my background color so it just doesn't show up anymore so that's looking pretty good and then you also might be wondering how to make them squares it's actually pretty easy to do you just need to go to values and text size anything over like 20 We'll make a we'll make somewhat of a square i did forget one step um so for the correlation coefficient we want to leave that at zero decimal places because we want our values to just be one uh digit that's going to allow us to create the squares um, so we can do that by coming to the formatting values let's change our text size to be like 20 24 let's say make them more squares so that's looking pretty good you can size this however you want, but that's a pretty nice correlation uh, visual. You can change the formatting of this table however you'd like to, uh, but you can just see this nice correlation plot. Uh, one last thing here, you can notice when you have variable one versus variable two and they're the exact same, you see that they are perfectly correlated. That makes sense because a change in one is the exact same change in the other. So you're gonna have that nice blue across the entire way, then everyone else is gonna have some other form of blue or red because they're probably not perfectly correlated so that was a long video but a lot of fun i enjoyed making this natively in power bi i hope you like this video if you did please make sure to hit the subscribe button it is the best way to show your support of the channel and helps me continue creating power bi content if you like the way i present power bi concepts make sure you check out my training over at training.bielite.com we have some awesome training on power bi dax alteryx and sql at the moment and we're going to add more and more very soon and with that i'll see you in the next video